to start this dialogue <coughs> is to take a look first at Xenophanes, the teacher of Parmenides, because he lays out a method and in the wheelwright translation <coughs> the translation captures the idea as Contemporaries, what is called the Testimonia and Wheelwright. <clears throat> the contemporaries looked at this and they said, What he means by this idea of the whole uh, to be mind. Oh, look here. This is the whole problem, because I think we're going to go through an exploration and we're going to say what's the self? He's just circling the, circling the self, so the whole, <clears throat> in, in red. into the Parmenides, <clears throat> if you could hold on to this Pointing it, it is and the whole. even turned it into a question. Putting a question mark in red. In red. And writing it, what in red. What is the whole or the mind that sees, hears, and especially thinks? Un underlining thinks. Why? because it's a direct way of getting to the idea of the self that we're going to look at through this dialogue. <clears throat> so I think the best way to go through this might be to get a couple of readers, and any time you want to stop the show, raise a hand for any question or thought, right? and we'll pick it up from that point on. So. How about a couple of volunteers? <coughs> We're uh, we using the Balboa? Yes. Julie has her hand up. One. I can't believe Ingmar is not. Uh, I don't have a Balboa translation. Oh, interesting. Pardon? He doesn't have a Balboa. Um, yeah, I'm quite listening. Okay, I'll read. Okay. <coughs> Would you hold it? Would you like to come up and forward and, and uh, yes. no, <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> oh. If you'd like, if you'd like here, no. Well, actually, I can. No. Let me just give, give me a second to move the microphone. That's all. Okay. It might be more fun since he's filming. Well, we don't have a camera quite. Or he yet. can bring the camera this way. So that I can see myself. Full color. Oh, right. wow. Full three dimensionality. You guys are good just like this. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I could sit over on that chair there and we could just turn around here. <clears throat> now, there's some curious words that start this dialogue off. Mm -hmm. right. It starts off, I immediately. Right. This is an urgency, right? Hey, I immediately decided to do something when I landed in Athens, right? Immediately. Mm -hmm. right. So let's pick it up. All right. 
which one you want? Set the list or add an answer? Right from the beginning. I'll do set the list. I immediately, after we arrived at Athens from Krasimenea, the place of our abode, we happened to meet with Adamantos and Glaucon at the place of assembly. And Adamantus, taking me by the hand, said, Welcome, O Cephalus, and if there's anything you need, of those things that we have here, of which we are able to provide, please ask. Then on the one hand, I'm certainly here indeed for this very self, for this very self as being in need of your help. Okay, that's enough. I thought it was you all. So, is it significant that he's using people that play a major role in Plato's Republic? Clearly. I think so. Right? So right from the beginning, we have a good point. Mm-hmm. Why, yeah. why is he introducing this dialogue using these two people? Really because good question. Because it shows, hey, it shows Cephalus, Hey, traveling a great distance in order to participate in this dialogue, mm -hmm. and then we see him in the Republic. Unwilling to go even the distance uh, from. That's the, right. Unwilling to even go up to Athens to have right. a talk with Socrates. To have a talk with right? Socrates. Yep. So we have an extreme going on, don't we? Yes. Right. Mm. And Adimantus, he continues his very pleasant way of going. All right, Barbara. Change the uh, text when she read Cephalus's remark. Then, on the one hand, I am certainly here indeed for this very self mm -hmm. as being in need of your help. Now, look here. The biggest problem we're going to have in reading this thing is to watch the use of the word self you'll find that he uses the word self in a way in which we would never do it. Look, often when he's talking about someone who has a certain status, he'll put this word in front of Parmenides. Or Zeno. Hey, not only that, but he'll put it in front of the good, the idea of the good. He'll use also the idea of the great idea of the model, or as you sometimes call it, the paradigm. Par what other name for paradigm? The logos. So pure head, pure head. So is he'll also self. use the idea of self for logos. So he's got a box for self. He's got Parmenides and Zeno. Now he just put in that. now logos and self. Um, according to Barbara, and that's a good authority. The idea of the self plays a major role in all. Hellenic literature, not just Platonic, right? the whole Hellenic tradition. The idea of the self is used in the Iliad, in Homer's Iliad, 1,600 times. Would you not agree? <coughs> That's a good number. It's a good number. And it deserves you and I to see how they're using it and why. Mm, indeed. Because even though it's used this many times, it's very rarely translated as self. Right. Okay. So, <coughs> I would like you to speculate on this. What do you see as the significance of the first use of the idea of self by Cephalus? I am here for the very purpose, no, no, I'm here for self. Mm -hmm. right? <coughs> Very self. <coughs> mm -hmm. 
-hmm. If that's what he means, if that's what we're here for, therefore, hey, this work is really about the idea of the self right from the beginning. They want to know about the self, and that's why we take off from this opening part. Okay, let's go back to reader. I think it might be worth saying to Pierre Please. that... Oh, by the way, we've been working as a group on this dialogue, and therefore the people who've been present in the group obviously should jump in any time they want in order to make comments. Yes. Oh, well, I, I remember when you brought this idea into the group, we noticed that, and you pointed out, that the very first meaning for autos in the lexicon is self. Mm -hmm. you know, a true self, pure self, but oh. self. And yet, and there are other ways it is used if you believe the lexicon on those other issues, mm -hmm. which is a different matter. But I wanted to say that. Yeah. Okay. Comments? Oops. Jump in any time. Okay. There we go. Hold it while Barbara picks up her paper. Yes. Seems to be having trouble with this slippery little devil. Okay. Is it me or is it you? You speak next. Did you say, please tell us, Julie? No. Okay. Please tell us your name. What was your maternal brother's name? For I do not remember. For at that time, he was just a child when I came here before to the assembly from Klazim and I. But since that time, a great length of time has already taken place. But his father's name was Pirilampus, I believe. Uh, quite so. To be sure, but what was self? Hey, another second use. What was for How self? are they using this idea of self? Take a look at that. Again, it's a curious use for our language. Mm -hmm. right? To be sure, but what was his self? Hey, that means he wants to know his, his first name. Mm -hmm. His proper name, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and his, his purpose. <laughs> it's not right, right? Okay, yeah. look here. Self can be used as a nomenclature for first name for some notable. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Quite notable. All right, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> Antiphon. But what is it that you need most to inquire after? You are aware that these fellow citizens of mine are quite philosophical. And I've heard that this very antiphon, antiphon was frequently present with one Pythodorus, the companion of Zeno, and that he treasured in his memory the discourses, the logos, which Socrates, Zeno, and Parmenides had with each other at that time, having been often heard from Pythodorus. All right, look here. To understand this dialogue, you have to follow that word. It's going to play a major role in the distinctions that follow up, and if we don't catch it, we'll miss a nice level of thought that's going on. So every time we see the word logos, we want to know where it is, why it is, and how it's being used. All right. So in this case, um, He treasured in his memory, in his mind, right? The memory of that logos, right? So therefore, it's a treasured thing. Mm -hmm. And we want to know, it looks like there's a gap of some 25 or more years hey, they must have heard about this. Why did it take them this long to suddenly come to Athens to discover about this thing called the self? Well, it doesn't make any sense. 
Okay, we go ahead. Okay, you speak the truth. Accordingly, then, we are in need of hearing these discussions. But this is no... Sorry, these, these discourses. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but this is no difficult matter to accomplish. For the young man, Antiphon, has made them the subject of quite focused attention. And indeed, after that, he now applies himself very closely to equestrian affairs with his grandfather, who also has the same name. Then, if we must, let us go to him, for he just now went home from here, <coughs> for he lives very near in Melito. Okay, look here. This is going to be a continuous problem, right? Let me make it clear, all right? They're translating the Greek word atois, all right, with themselves. Tell me, can you make up a sentence where you'd use the word themselves? How frequently do you use that idea of themselves? Uh, does it fit this scene? Does it fit this sentence? Please take a look. The discourses, is that the them he's talking about? That's the them he's talking about. Themselves? Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, that's the them, and then... Oh, you think? That's what it refers to? I thought it was... See, the word people. them, well, underneath them it, is the word that's often translated as themselves. So the translator mm. ducked the issue and stuck in the word them. Right? Uh, which translator? Pardon me? Which translator? One. One. Oh. Okay. All right, we're going to come back to that several times. Okay, now we go back to Cephalus. After we had thus spoken, after we had thus spoken, we proceeded to the house of Antiphon, and we found him at home, handing a bridle to a coppersmith to be prepared in a certain way. But as, as soon as the smith was gone, and his brother had told Auto self, the reason for which we had arrived, he also recognized me in consequence of my former journey to this place, and he greeted us kindly, and upon our pleading with him to relate the discourses, the logos, at first he hesitated, for he said it was a great deal of work. But afterwards, he most certainly set it out in detail. Therefore, you can Antiphon said indeed, <clears throat> that Pythodorus spoke it. to say. Okay, Barbara. Well, there's another auto. That's in right. The, you catch it? Please read yes. that part again. His brother had told self the reason for which we had arrived. Therefore, how is he using the idea of self? Well, it might be again like you... <clears throat> like we, we also suggested that it was like a... What? A honorific. Honorific. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Like some people say, sir. Yeah. Or some lofty title. Like yep. in England, they might say lord or count or duke. And mm -hmm. right, it's a honorific term. All right. Can it also just be the same, or the, could it just mean? Could it just mean the same, or the, or the, or, or the, the aforementioned person? You're saying, could it be a pronoun? Yeah. And that's what you usually argue. That's how we get around this problem of self. Yeah. We say, oh, it's just a pronoun, and then get mad and walk out and then come back. Yeah. <laughs> it's a way to get around it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't well, see it. I, excuse me. I don't see it as a way of getting around it. I mean, a pronoun stands in the place of a noun. If you're referring to a self you might call him him. How's that getting around it? 
but it's plural. Um, when not I, no, it's not plural, it's singular. Well, there, there, there are two. There's, yeah. In that passage, there are two. One is plural. There was, there was a reason why I said get around it, be more honest. Okay, I'm, and, I'm going to hear. And that is because a lot of people wouldn't want to elevate this dialogue to the level of a discussion about self, and therefore wouldn't treat this particular word as anything particularly unique. So if we're, gonna, if we're going to um, take a risk that this is a dialogue about the nature of that which sees, hears, and thinks, um, then, and the logos, then we're not going to get around that problem. We have to, we have right. to confront it head on. Right. And that's what I meant by a lot of people, they don't dodge it, they just don't see it as important. And later it'll turn out to be that is Socrates' major problem that he's puzzled over. That's what he's puzzled over, the idea of the self. It has many manifold uses and variations and they blend together and they weave themselves in and out and it causes him a great distress to understand how it's possible that that one word can go through all of these changes. So well, at, at most of them, the argument that they just put forward, while it's certainly valid and we all want to read this dialogue at the higher level, there was nothing in what he said that precluded the use of the word as a pronoun also. So it could be both, and just operating at more than one level. Hold them both. All right, fair? All right, ready to go then? Uh, I'll also add that... Hold it. It also turns out that Parmenides' first hypothesis was about the self. So, you know, just adding to the fact that this is a dialogue about self. Yeah, that's not even giving away the whole dialogue. You know, it's not like a box spoiler or anything. It adds to what Pierre just said. Right. Yeah. Yeah, if, we, if, if we keep it with who it would be referring to, Antiphon, it's, I think, helpful to remember that Antiphon has a <coughs> self. And a status. He's important. He's right? important. Yeah. So I was All thinking you could read the Cathedoras, or do you want me to read the Cathedoras? Because then we're going to have to make big decisions, but right now we're still working on <laughs> little. Is it coming up pretty soon? Yeah, right. Cathedoras is going to start talking right away. I think. Cathedoras spoke to say at this at the time, Zeno and Parmenides. Well, I don't know. That's Antiphon reporting to the so right. I guess it depends on how you hear it. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. to say <clears throat> that at that time Zeno and Parmenides arrived to celebrate the great Panathenaea. Thus, on the one hand, Parmenides was already quite well advanced in years, very gray-haired, but of a beautiful and good appearance, most nearly about 65 years of age. But that, on the other hand, at that time, Zeno was nearly 40 years old but very tall and graceful to see. And self was said, is that right? Mm -hmm. To have come to be the dear friend of Parmenides. That same, self same. Um, then Pythodorus said that they lodged with the him. The selves lodged. That the selves lodged with him, lodged in, the with him in the ceramicus. Mm -hmm. Outside the walls where indeed Socrates also arrived, and many certain others with him, who had set their hearts upon hearing the written discourses of Zeno. And the with him is a with self, too. Okay. Socrates arrived and many <coughs> others. Socrates also arrived, and many certain others with self. 
who had set their hearts upon hearing the written discourses of Zeno. For at that time, they first began to pay attention to his writings. Since Socrates was very young at that time. And there's another self there. For at the time, selves first began to pay attention to his writing. I think you should just continue. Okay. Since Socrates was very young at the time, therefore Zeno, self, read to Socrates, read to selves, sorry. Therefore Zeno, self, read to selves, while Parmenides happened to be outside, so that only a small part of the Logos, Logosis still remained to be read. When Pythodorus, self, together with Parmenides, came in from outside, and also Aristotle, who, Aristoteles, who, self, who he, hmm, who he, self, said, became one of the 30 tyrants, so that they still had to hear some small part of the discourses. Not, however, Pythodorus, self, since he had indeed heard the discourses of Zeno before. And a lot of that is where you see that honorific use, I think, right. that we talked okay. about. Hey, five uses, at least five uses, again, of the idea of the self in one paragraph. <clears throat> now, notice how, come on, stop, take a look. Can we come up with a theory on how it's being used in that paragraph? Hmm. Right, they set their self on hearing, right? They set their self on hearing. Look at that. Come on, five places. And the idea of themselves as, again, that variation of the Greek word autos or autois, again, is being used. Do you find that a curious use in English, themselves, in that context? They read to themselves. Zeno himself read to themselves. It's, it seems very um, internal. Like they read to themselves. Mm. It's not like they're reading to an, o an audience. They're mm. reading to themselves. It's called a reflexive. It's, it goes back to the subject. It's right. called a reflexive pronoun. Yeah. In that context of themselves, they read to themselves. Mm -hmm. But... But we wouldn't use it that way, would we? Because Zeno is a subject. Everybody there is regarded as a person, but also as a self. Mm -hmm. And that, that seems to be the, the, I think that's the hidden message. Mm -hmm. that, that Zeno, Alto, Alton, read to Altoys, Pythodorus, Altos, uh, Altos himself, they're, they're all modifying the subject <coughs> yeah. um, as, an, as an intensive, like she said, or not. Yeah. And again, would you agree we're back to this use of the word logos again? Right? So that appears again and again. It's going to play a major role throughout the dialogue. So is this, is this the self that hears Zeno's reading to themselves because <coughs> the, themselves that can hear? Are they the whole? Does it make sense to you that way? Yeah. If they're reading to themselves? I said no, but I, I'm no. in the minority. What is <laughs> But it's... If this is a democracy and we're going to decide it that way. <coughs> but they're reading to themselves. It looks like they're, they're silently reading. 
Oh, well, that's the, true too. The, they're not reading to themselves. It's Zeno reading to them, right? No. I think I think themselves is a push there. Mm -hmm. More than more than it's 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 a little bit. Yeah. How it, could, it could be just them. Okay. But them referring to selves. I'll to try it. Their selves. Or okay. Something? Read to them. So the English word kind of. Yeah, because because themselves is really reflexive, and that would give Pierre what he was trying to say that they all read to themselves, but no, right, right. Zeno read to them, so you can't use the reflexive. Mm -hmm. Maybe like Zeno read to their selves. That would be good. <laughs> okay, that's all right. That's better. If okay, we're going to play it on that higher level. That's right. Okay, now we go ahead with Sock. Go ahead. Therefore, Socrates, having listened, he then urged him to read again the first hypothesis of the first logos. And having been read, Socrates said, you can <coughs> In what way do you mean this, O Zeno? If the beings are many, is it then necessary that they be both like and unlike? But this is certainly impossible. For it is not possible for the unlike to be like, nor for the like to be unlike. You do not mean it in this way, do you? And you left out one self then. Oh. If beings are many, is it then necessary mm -hmm. that selves are both like and unlike? That's right. That's right. Jordy Den Barber. Um, in what way do you mean this, O Zeno? If the beings are many, is it then necessary that selves be both like and unlike? But this is certainly impossible. It is not possible for the unlike to be like, nor the like to be unlike. You do not mean it in this way, do you? I, I hate to badger. Badger away, Dave. Badger it, badger. But um, he's using the neuter plural there, and it's referring to beings. Um, not the like and the unlike, but, um, but the, the beings might possess like and unlike. Yeah. But, but so there's, two uh, level, there's like three levels that even the idea of self works in this dialogue, I think. Mm -hmm. So you have something like, if beings are many, is it then necessary that being selves are yes, both like and unlike? Yes, that was like being selves. But that's, that's the problem I have. It's like, is there, are there different levels of self? I mean, are ideas selves? I mean, and being so. You know, you said change. this before. I wrote it down. <laughs> so that's major. Well, thank you for saying it again. No, no, I, I, I thank him too. I thank him. I don't have a problem with thanking Dave. He's a luminary. See, <clears throat> one of our goals <clears throat> is to see whether we can understand how the author thinks. So by raising all of these questions, we're forcing ourselves to examine the language to see how best to express what he's trying to express. And that way we're trying to understand how the author thinks. David just a added a very fine element. And the question we would have, the test would be, would an ancient Greek, is there some reason to believe that an ancient Greek would see it the way in which you just suggested is that possibility there, just as a possibility? Oh, absolutely. Therefore, they would On the see grounds it. he gave. Yeah. Pardon me? On the grounds he gave. It's a neuter plural, yeah. so anta is a neuter plural. Yeah. Yeah. The rest follow from that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, also, I'm just considering that English has got pronouns. We've got he, she, it, them, they. Mm -hmm. But it's very clearly in the Greek. So if the Greeks are talking out loud, they're saying alto, altos, altois, right? They're not hearing he, she, it, them. Mm -hmm. That's right. What? Altos, altos, altos. Yeah. Again. It's coming up again and again. Yeah. Very All rapidly. Right. Good, good, good. I like yeah, that. Okay. Rapidly. Very frequently. Go ahead. There we go. Uh, so you yes, in this way. Or is it not the case then that if it is indeed impossible that both the unlike be like and the like be unlike, it is certainly impossible that many should also exist. For if many were to be, then they would undergo impossibility. 
Is this then the intention of your discourses? Low boy. Lo of your low boy, your low boy, and no other one than to struggle through all arguments to show that many do not exist? Okay. And Go ahead. Do you consider each of your logoi <laughs> to be a positive proof in support of your hypothesis? Uh, yeah. The hypothesis of, of self or something. There's a self in there. Oh, the, of your self hypothesis, right? He, that's, his, that's his hypothesis. Hmm. He begins hmm. with himself. But then he's talking to Zeno. So, Zeno, as a, as a self. Mm. Of right. this of you. He's got one too. He's got a self on both of you Nah. Mm. So that you are also led to think that you have produced so many positive proofs as you have composed discourses. Logos. Logoi. Okay. Logos. To show that many do not exist. Do you mean it in this way, or do I not understand you correctly? Okay, look. Keep in mind, if, this is, if they're using language philosophically, beings are many, or self-beings are many, being like and unlike, that means the realm of ideas is being, and he's placing like and unlike in the realm of being which is really also the realm of ideas. Therefore, it presupposes that these are both ideas, using a capital I for ideas, and they're in the realm of the intellectual realm of the ideas, also called being. Why is that important? Because when we go through the hypotheses, we're going to want to know which hypothesis would this fit in? Right. Okay, keep going. No other way. You have understood quite well the intent of the whole work. I understand. O oh, Parmenides, that Zeno does not only intend to be situated in the other close bonds of friendship with you, but also to agree with you in the following writings. For he has written in the very same direction as you, although, <coughs> or would that be self same direction as you? Oh, well, I think that's why he, he translates oh, very it as, same. Yeah. yeah. Okay, for he has written in the very same direction as you, although by changing certain particulars, he endeavors to deceive us that he asserts something different for on the one hand, you, Parmenides, assert in your poems that the all is one, and you produce sound proofs in a beautiful and good way in support of these hypotheses. But on the other hand, he say, says in turn the following, that many is not, and then he self Produced his, he produced very many and very mighty positive proofs. Maybe you could say Zeno self, and it would help. I don't know. Zeno, you know, then he self produced <laughs> um, many positive self proofs. Therefore, I'm not the, not self proofs. No, I don't think not no. self proofs. Therefore, on the one hand, you affirm that all is one. But on the other hand, he denies that all is many. And in this way, almost saying the same thing, that each one's, almost saying the same, self-same thing, self thing, yeah. each one speaks so as to appear not to have said the same things. Thus the latter discourse, logos. The uh, latter. What? Oh, there's not a. There's he's, not. He's, he's understanding discourse from the gist of the, do, the 
dialogue there. It's just okay, a look here. Logos is up, up. What we want to make sure is how well does Socrates understand Parmenides' poem? Hmm. He's, he's asserting that all is one. All is one. Mm -hmm. right? We want to look back and say, wait a minute, is that a good way to summarize the poem, given the fragments we have? Yes. Like a well-rounded sphere, neither more... But that's the... light, and therefore it's a simile. That wouldn't be oh. his statement. Uh-huh. But that wouldn't be a thesis statement. That's what it's like. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, that'd be nice. Sure. I said that'd be nice. Because it's just four words. The all is one. Yeah. The, the whole poem. Subsumed in four words. Pretty sweet. Is, that, is that a accurate uh -huh. summary or statement of the poem? Hmm. I know how to decide this. Ask David. Right. I didn't volunteer. <laughs> I, 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 I thought his poem was about being, all being, and not about the all. But I, I meant to go back and look at it, and I didn't. And that's okay. why I'm beating myself up. Okay, look here. We'll leave this as outstanding. Okay, debt owed. Yeah. Needed to be answered. Okay, oh, sir. Just a quick question. How do we know that it's the poem that's, that's uh, uh, being referred to here? Because it says it, you and your poems. Yeah. Oh, it, I, yeah. did I miss the poem? I'm sorry. No, it's there in the word. In your poems. I did miss that. Thank okay, you, you. all right. Okay. In your poems. Though. In your poem. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Yes, O Socrates, so it is. But you have not perfectly perceived the truth of my words. Although, just as Spartan hounds, you have indeed well pursued and tracked their intent. But in the first place, this remains unnoticed by you, that the written words are not in every respect so venerable, so that it was composed, as you say then, with the intention of concealing from men as if I was doing something of great importance. But on the other hand, you have spoken something of those things which happen to be the case. But on the other hand, the truth of the matter is indeed that these writings were composed for the purpose of providing a certain assi assistance to the logos of Parmenides against those who tried their hand at comically representing the self by asserting that if one is, many ridiculous and opposite results happen to the self logos. Okay, hey. The same logos. Self logos. And also, I'm right, every time he uses the word logos. That's strengthening the fact that that's playing a major role right from the beginning to the end. And therefore, we want to see all the turns and twists it takes because it's absolutely essential in a short while. Okay, go ahead. Truly, <clears throat> then, this writing contradicts the advocates of the many and opposes this and many other such opinions. Such self opinions? No. Such opinions. Mm. By being willing to make clear that the hypothesis, hypothesis that asserts that many is, will undergo or suffer even more absurd consequences than that which asserts that the one is, or that the one being. No. The one is. The one is. Uh, if any one of Self is sufficiently gone through in detail. If any one of self is sufficiently gone through in detail, uh, therefore it has escaped your notice, O Socrates, that this uh, discourse 
which was composed by me when I was a youth, <coughs> composed by me when I was a youth, through such a thing indeed as the love of contention, and the writing itself was stolen by someone, so that I was not able to consult whether self should be brought out or led into the light or not. It has escaped your notice, I say, that it was not composed through the love of honor, which belongs to a more advanced period of life, but through a juvenile love of contention. Although, just as I have said indeed, you do not conjecture amiss. Okay. Hey, major, major idea here. Right? Notice. Okay. It's a very interesting for us, a major idea. Let's read it together. All right? Um, I'm at uh, 128E5. So that, so that I was not able to consult whether self should be brought out into the light or not. That's the issue. Right? Hey. See, it was, I wasn't able to determine that because it was stolen. And I wasn't able to determine whether or not we should reveal this or not. About what? About the self. Take a look at that phrase again. How important is that to understand what's going on in the dialogue in Zeno's report? Well, it depends on the motive, right? Like, does he, uh, is he judging that his treatise shouldn't be published because it's not as good as Parmenides and it's not worth publishing? Or, if self is an honorific here, is he saying he shouldn't publish it because it shouldn't be revealed to the many because it's a sacred doctrine? That's right. Which is it? Oh, I'm just re raising the possibility. No, yeah, I know that. That's, but that's the issue. You got the issue. So um, when we work together over this, we have an easy way to solve it. Uh, we just ask Eldar. <laughs> That's a new rule. <laughs> no, no, come on. Um, come on. Well, um, how, come on. How important is that? Jeff, how important is that line? I'm going to say it's pretty important, but I'm, I was going to hope one of these great creators would judge that for me. <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of like uh, in Tibetan Buddhism, they don't just tell, you know, I have uh, one of those texts, and they don't just tell you what they're meaning by it. Like you have to have the, the yogi or whoever explained it to you. So. Yeah. And by the way, his buddy is Parmenides. He could have asked Parmenides. <laughs> it must have been therefore quite early after he wrote it that it was stolen. And therefore he couldn't. Have, therefore they had this wonder for all of these years until at this point he brought it to Athens to reveal it. But what do you see in that line? Your turn. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I have gone with it um, the, the direction that the second suggestion that Ingmar made, which is that it's self as the highest concept and therefore it's a question of whether self whether that secret teaching or highest teaching of Parmenides okay. as revealed. Let me try something, all right? <clears throat> After you finish this dialogue, do you think you'd find an easy way to bring this up among your friends and to talk <laughs> about it? No. Because the whole no. thing is going to reveal itself about the idea of the self. Mm -hmm. I'd say there's a danger in doing that. Well, you're different because where you come from, people use the idea of self all the time, don't they? Yeah, I wish that was true. <laughs> I wish. But, but, but Julie, that's the same thing in Wisconsin. They always use the idea of self. Or even where she comes from. <laughs> Is that right? Uh, 
Well, they speculate about it. They could, like Carl Jung, you know, there's all these different ideas, sources of the self, and there's a lot of kind of ambiguous, relativistic statements made about the self. And here and is a whole here. dialogue devoted to the idea of self, and no one does it. To about, the self itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even though Carl Jung knows that the idea of the Parmenides sermon turned him around. Well, I mean, but whatever we decide, right. our analysis should involve some reflection on the idea of the spirit of controversy. Yes. That he's saying, yeah. maybe it shouldn't be pu published because uh, I was in a love of victory type of state of mind at the time. Yeah, that's right. That's, good. that's helpful. Which, uh, which Socrates himself is, is demonstrating in the very dialogue they're having. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. How so? Well, I mean, the first thing he's doing is accusing Zeno of, of trying to hide something. He's, he's he, right off the bat, he's being contentious. Contentious. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, he's, and he's the best example in the room at this point of a young good. budding philosopher, and even he can't keep his ego out of it. Okay, good, good. All right, well, go back then, hold right. it. Who also tries to steal this stuff? <laughs> yeah, who stole it? <laughs> okay. Like, what in the world is going on with that? I mean, like, Eldar can't, is going to lose friends if he brings it up to people, and somebody's going around trying to steal these books? Like, <laughs> I don't think anybody would steal this if I left it in the park. Right! <laughs> I, could, yeah. I, could, I could come back I the next day. I could be like, what the heck is this? I come back the next day and it'd still be like, like what kind of world is it that people are oh, stealing these Jeff? things? Um, um, this is probably obvious to everybody, but I have to say that even though I tend to take the, the opposite point of view and take the lower mm -hmm. road, I have to say I really like this. I'm reading the Taylor, though. Um, I really like the way that it's... What, if you're going to work at the higher level, whether or not, uh, Taylor just translated it as it. Uh, you know, I was not able to consult whether or not it should be in, issued into the light, but if you use self there, if you took self in the sense of the first hypothesis, and you took light as representative of the second hypothesis, then he's asking essentially the highest question there is in the platonic world right there. That's right. How does the self get to, how does the self from number one get to the self in number two? Yeah. And should we reveal that to the public? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, except you're supplying, you're saying it's, we should focus on the light aspect more than the public. Right, um, like yes. bringing it to light is the idea of publishing it. Right? I'm bringing it into the light of the sun so that everybody can see it, etc. That's the right? You're saying, look at the first and second hypothesis, you can think about light another way. That's right. Uh, you can take it at both levels, sure. Exactly. Especially since he does talk about folks, whereas in the dialogue they often, uh, Juan has very kindly, I think, translated bring into the light for finitai, which yes. is one of the root meanings. But here they actually have into the, the light, the folks. So it's a very strong wording, Explain. and I like uh, what <laughs> Jeff did with it. Plus, I have to tell you, my family, if I started talking about the self or exploring it as a question, they would, they would just completely dismiss the conversation as if I had said nothing. <laughs> they, it's not that they would object or, att or attack me, it would be like they had heard nothing. Like deer in headlights. Yeah, like the wind, you know. Oh, did someone say something? I don't believe so, you know. Okay, okay to return? Yeah. Okay. Socrates? Oh, <coughs> Socrates has to get his next page. I thought we were stopping at page five. We're overachievers. <coughs> Socrates, I admit it then that, and I am led to believe that the case is just as you have stated it. But explain to me about the following particulars. Do you not consider that there is a certain idea of likeness, self according to self, and another one such as this, but opposite in turn. 
an unlike idea? Okay, hey, you know what we're doing now? Same thing. Idea self now can be linked to likeness and unlikeness. Right. right, self by itself. Okay, keep going. But that we share, you, you and me, we share, and all other things, which we surely call many, have a share of these two beings. And then on the, and that on the one hand, things that share of likeness become like, and according to the degree that such things may share in this, but those that share of unlikeness become unlike. But that those that share of both become both. Therefore, if all things also share of both opposite beings and are both like and unlike themselves by participating in both, then what is wonderful? Yeah. And are both like and unlike their selves by participating in both. Yes, keep going. For if on the one hand anyone brings to light that the like selves become unlike, or the unlike selves become like, then I think that it would be monstrously absurd. But if on the other hand someone were to bring to light that such participants of both of these undergo both, then as far as I'm concerned, Ozino, it does not appear to be out of the ordinary. Nor indeed if anyone would show that all things are one through their participation of the one, of the one and that these same selves are many in turn through their participation of plurality. But if someone were to show that this self, which is one, is many, and in turn that the many are indeed one, I shall immediately wonder at this. And similarly in all other cases, if on the one hand someone could bring to light an argument worthy of admiration, by showing that both the generic and ideal selves undergo these opposite experiences in themselves. <clears throat> but if on the other hand someone demonstrates that I am both one and many, what would be wondrous about this? And demonstrate this assertion by saying, oh, on the one hand, that when he wishes to bring to light that I am many, that the parts on the right side of me are different from those on the left, and that the front parts are different from the back parts, and in like manner, the upper from the lower parts. For I think that I participate of plurality. But on the other hand, when he brings to light that I am one, he should say that since there are seven of us, I am one man and participate of the one. So that in this way he would bring to light the truth of both these assertions. Thus, if anyone should try to bring to light that stones and wood and such particulars are both many and one, we would say that self exhibits to our view such things as are many and one, but that he does not show that the one is many nor the many one nor speak of anything wonderful. But we would agree to that which is affirmed by all. But if on the one hand anyone would first divide the ideas apart, those of which I have just now been speaking, the selves according to selves, such as in likeness and unlikeness, and plurality and the one, rest and motion, and all such as these, then reveal himself as being able to blend together and separate apart these in themselves, then I will indeed be in wondrous admiration of Zeno. Thus 
Thus, on the one hand, I am led to think that we should strenuously labor in the investigation of these particulars. But yet, on the other hand, it would be deserving of much more admiration if anyone could solve the following puzzle, as I said, about this self that is woven together into the idea selves in a manifold way, just as you demonstrated in detail about objects we see by the faculty of sight, if you could also in the same way demonstrate in, deal, in uh, detail about the ideas which we grasp by the activity of the logos. Okay, look here. Here's our task. Mm. This is Socrates' state of mind that he mm. comes into the dialogue with. Can you list all of the points that he just made? How many would they be? After you list them, all right, list them hierarchically because that's what he's doing as well. All right? mm. So what? Because we will want to take that list after we read the Parmenides, the hypotheses, and see whether or not each of these is answered. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> All right? Mm -hmm. Then we can see, uh, we can see to what degree he benefited by the dialogue. Now, that takes your work. Yeah. You have to do it. Right? You have to go through the labor of going through it <clears throat> and seeing, of course, how the word admiration and, and miraculous uh, plays a role in it. Right? Mm -hmm. This is the goal. List them, make a table. Then as we keep that in mind, you can carry that with you and put it right next to the dialogue because as we go through the hypothesis, you can check each one of them off. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the most significant ones is the last one. Ah. <laughs> you see, um, self that is woven together. Yeah, want to read it? Oh, as I said. <clears throat> um, I'm led to think that we should strenuously labor in the investigation of these particulars, but yet on the other hand, it would be deserving of much more admiration if anyone could solve the following puzzle, as I said, about this self that is woven together into the idea selves. That's I, it. That's his problem. Way. See? Itself, themselves, herself, his self. Right, thyself, self, all of these are woven in together, one and another, and he's puzzled about how they're utilized. One. Second. Just as you demonstrated in detail about objects that we see by the faculty of sight. That's second. Similarly, you should do that for the arguments used on the, uh, the proposition of sight or perception. Go ahead. If you could also, in the same way, demonstrate in deal, detail about the ideas which we grasp by the activity of the logos. Okay, look here. That's the major one. So you have to go back. <clears throat> when now when you go through the dialogue itself, right? The self, the idea self. You should then plot how the idea of the Logos is being used, then you can then go back to that point Socrates is making and make a great statement about how the idea of the Logos plays itself out in each of the hypotheses and which one it is and which one it is not and in which way it appears to be only a semblance. That's your task. Okay, that's it. Well, Time's up. Well, also, uh, if, we're, if we read this looking for the idea of self, um, we see here he's making distinctions that apply to visible objects. Also. But what he wants to see in respect to forms 
or ideas mm -hmm. he's saying in themselves. No, that's right. Like not invisible objects, but in themselves. That's right. That's right. You got it. That's one of the points. How many of you find? Well, when you come back, you'll tell us. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. So, good review. We're going to go through the whole dialogue this way. I want to take pictures of those pages. Okay. <laughs> Pierre, what's... Yeah, sure. Treasured? This is in Treasured? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.